the argument is not about whether God exists. It's not mm. even about whether Christianity has been a good or bad thing. Although I, I think that the the values by which we judge whether it's good or bad are are, are themselves broadly Christian. Mm. But this was a perspective that um, I was not entirely given to embracing, and mm. that goes back essentially to my childhood, as I think f for so many people's relationship to this issue does, because it's very personal. I think that in itself is a mm. measure of how mm. significant um, the influence of, 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 of Christianity is on us, actually, the, the degree to which we are shaped by it from our childhoods. But I was, as a child, I was brought up uh, an Anglican. I went to church, I sang in the choir, I um, went to Sunday school. But to be honest, I, I found it kind of dull. Uh, the thing I really uh, enjoyed, the thing that really kind of got my blood moving was um, the classical world. And I liked it for the same reason that I had earlier been obsessed by dinosaurs, namely that it was big, it was fierce, it was extinct. <laughs> and to be honest, I would have, you know, I, I was very much on the side of Pontius Pilate. I, you know, the, the eagles, the togas, the glamour of it. And Jesus kind of slightly dull in comparison. I mean, a loser, really. Mm. Um, and so it wasn't that I, uh, you know, there was a kind of a dramatic moment where I lost my faith. It was just like a kind of a, a, a dial going slightly down, a dimmer mm. switch. Mm. Uh, and it was essentially blotted out by the sum of my fascination with the classical world and so when I in due course came to write history um, it was the Romans it was the Greeks that I wanted to write about um, but I found the experience of living in the minds of people like Caesar people like Leonidas the king who dies at Thermopylae people who I had deeply admired as a child kind of almost hero worship mm. I found it increasingly unsettling um, Caesar was renowned among the Romans for his quality of, of, of clementia, his, his clemency, his mercy. But this was a man who, it is said, um, slaughtered a million Gauls and enslaved another and was kind of cheered through the streets of Rome for it. Mm. Um, and I began to think that actually these are so remote from me, so alien that actually the kind of assumption I'd had that uh, these were the the seedbeds of my own values my own assumptions probably wrong and so um, essentially uh, over the past decade and a half really I've been kind of maneuvering myself towards writing a book which explores where I think ultimately mm. um, the values of, of, of humanism of secularism of liberalism that, that, that I hold actually come from um, and this was a quest that was sharpened for me by writing a book about um, the origins of Islam, mm. where I was essentially making the argument that um, a, a lot that, that Muslims believe about the origins of Islam are, are actually mythic, are, are, are back projections. And it was a repeated um, complaint of Muslim critics that I would never dream of doing the same to my own beliefs and values. Right. So in a, in a sense, Dominion is, is an attempt to do that, mm -hmm. to kind of trace the thread back of my liberal humanist values and to see where it leads through the labyrinth. And ultimately, it leads back to, uh, to, 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 to Christianity. And I've come to the conclusion that in almost all the essentials, myself, um, my friends, the society in which I live in, the whole of the West uh, is so saturated in, in, in Christian assumptions that it's almost impossible to kind of remove ourselves from them. And, and you, you say almost that in the book that it, it's it's almost that it, it, it is so widespread that we almost don't notice it. It's the kind of water we're swimming Yeah, well, the, in the, the metaphor that was kind of on my mind when I was writing the book was, um, you know, if, if, if the West is a, a goldfish bowl, then it, essentially the water that we mm. swim in is, is, is Christianity. But then after I'd finished the book, a, another metaphor struck me when I watched the um, HBO series Chernobyl about mm. the explosion of the, the nuclear reactor in, uh, yes. in the Soviet Union. And what you saw there, when the, when the reactor smashes open you literally see the air ionizing so you can see the radioactivity mm -hmm. leaking but the point of the story of course is that 
that radioactivity is leaking, you know, it's reaching Kiev, it's reaching yeah, Scandinavia, yeah. it's reaching, you know, the, the sheep farms of right. Cumbria. And people are breathing it in and being affected by it and, and don't even realize right. often that yeah. they're, they're being affected. I mean, I, I'm sure Anthony would perhaps approve of the comparison of Christianity <laughs> to radioactivity. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not saying that, that, that no, Christianity it, makes your hair drop out and no, kills sure. you. But, but, but it, it, it changes you in ways that, that you may not appreciate. And, and just quickly sketch out what, why that central idea. You, you say this in, in the book is so important. You say the belief that the son of the one God of the Jews had been tortured to death on a cross became so enduringly and widely held that today most of us in the West are dulled to just how scandalous it originally was. Why, why is that image so important at the center of Christianity? Well, the cross today is probably the most internationally recognizable cultural symbol that humanity has ever devised. Um, but the symbolism of it has been turned on its head. What the cross symbolized for Rome and for those who were subject to Rome was the power of the greatest empire on the face of the earth to torture to death anyone who opposed its rule. And governors of Roman provinces had the right to, to burn rebels, to throw them to the lions or to crucify them. And of these three fates, crucifixion was regarded as the worst, as in, in a sense being the, 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 the archetypal punishment for a rebellious slave. And the reason that it was so horrible was it, it was physically excruciating. Um, there was no one way of, 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 committi of, of, of uh, doing a crucifixion. You could mm. be hung upside down, you could be impaled. Mm. Um, or you could have nails smashed through your bones. And to stay alive on a cross, you would have to pull yourself up and down. So you would feel the metal scraping against mm. your bone the whole time. Um, birds would flock around your head. You'd be unable to beat them away. You'd be unable to stop them as they pecked out your eyes. Um, you would be naked. And so hours, perhaps days of excruciating agony would be endured. But worse than that, from the kind of the Roman point of view, it, it would be public. You would be a kind of billboard mm. advertising your own humiliation and the power of the authorities that were putting you to death. And so the idea that... Um, this symbol of all symbols should, in a sense, have kind of been upended that uh, from degradation, the notion of triumph, uh, from, um, from humiliation, glory, from, from, from death, life. And that more than that, the idea that um, someone who suffers the death of a slave emerges to become you know, it turns out to be, uh, in a sense, the, uh, the, the creator of, mm. of, of, of all heaven and earth and of all humanity. What that means in the long run is that it, dig it gives a dignity to people who previously would, would not have been afforded dignity by anyone. Mm. Um, it embeds at the, at the heart of the West the idea that in... It, the victim can triumph over the person who is victimizing him and that the lowest of the low might in a sense be the highest. And these, in the context of, of certainly of, of Roman culture, it's hard to emphasize just how radical a, a, a concept mm. that is. And therefore, just how much of a kind of um, a, a, a detonation it is under the assumptions of Roman power and the measure of, of how vast that explosion was is that now, by and large, we tend to take for granted that you know, the lowest of the low do have a dignity.